Hello everyone and welcome to Magma Rages episode 49. Uh, as usual, I am joined here by Panamonia and Salty Monkey. Welcome, welcome. Um, so today we've got some news that uh, we couldn't fit in last week's episode. Uh, and that's about Wildfest. We also decided to postpone it because it's closer to actual start of Wildfest now. Uh, what Wildfest is going to be is it's going to be a, a festival surrounded around uh, wild, basically, as uh, the name might indicate. Uh, and it's going to be from the 19th of February to the 11th of March. Uh, what this means is Arena is going to be wild during this period. So we're going to see the return of all your favorites, Piloted Shredder, Sludge Belcher, Lotheb, uh, Dr. Boom, if you're lucky enough, all of uh, your favorites from Wild. Uh, although I think almost everything I mentioned there was Nax and GVG, because <laughs> whenever I think of overpowered cards, those are the ones I think of. Uh, what we're also going to have is we're going to have the first Tavern Brawl is going to be a pre-made Tavern Brawl with some pre-made Wild decks to get the nostalgia flowing. Uh, and then we're going to have a, a Brawlicium, I think it was called. Uh, it's going to be like Arena for Tavern Brawl, basically, uh, where you're going to build your own, you're going to bring constructed wild decks, and you're going to play them in kind of an arena-like format where, you know, you're aiming to get 12 wins to get the maximum reward and three losses and you're out. Uh, so a little bit like we saw with the Heroic Tavern Brawls, except this one is going to be much closer to Arena itself. Uh, in that it's going to be structured with the same kind of uh, entry and um, reward system. So it'll be 150 gold to enter, we think, and rewards pretty much similar to those you would get in Arena. So if you want to farm some gold and you're a good constructed Arena player, I mean constructed Wild player, sorry, uh, then it's a good time to get some gold and some packs. And also, I said, did you mention the first one's free? Yeah, the first run is free uh, for that. Well, I didn't mean I didn't mention that, but yeah. Uh, so, what are, <laughs> your, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, are you looking forward to playing some wild, or are you just gonna get your pack and get out like uh, most uh, tavern brawls, to Pandemonia? Uh, probably. I don't know. Maybe depending how, like depending what the pre-made decks are. Like it depends if it gets the good nostalgia flowing or the bad nostalgia flowing, right? Like you know, for me, good good nostalgia is Control Warrior. You know, bad nostalgia is like Undertaker Hunter. So, you know, it all depends. I highly doubt they're going to do the, the unnerfed cards thing like we saw in the, the Champions Brawl. Um, I yeah, think it's more likely to be realistic wild decks now, not just older decks. So including new cards and old cards. Uh, uh, okay. So more, I think it'll be more akin to that. I, th I think that's more where they're going because, I mean, that's what the actual meta is going to be like for the the Brawlicium, you know, the wild... Um, uh, constructed brawl. Yeah, it could be interesting, you know. I'll, maybe I'll give it like a try and see how it feel. Otherwise, I'll probably just go back to standard, you know, get the pack. But I mean, we'll have to see. Like, I think it's too. I mean, especially we don't know what decks they're gonna, you know, choose. It could yeah, potentially yeah. be but very I, fun. I mean, yeah. more like the constructed one, right? Like you, you, you yeah, and I, yeah, Panamani, yeah. are, are people that didn't really like dust any of their wild cards or anything like that. I mean, we still have all of them, so we can Golden go sludge and vouchers, play. Uh... Boy. <laughs> we can Golden go and play zombie wild. Zombie Charles, boy. Okay, okay. <laughs> we don't need to know about all the dust you wasted. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, are, are you actually gonna play much of the brawl, like? Or do you think it's just okay, nice well, that they're catering to players that enjoy wild and you're just going to keep playing standard because that's where the HCT points are anyway? I think it's a bit of both. Uh, but I probably will try a couple. Of, I'll see how, you know, maybe. I mean, obviously, we can do the free one. And then depending how that one goes and how, like, if I enjoyed it, maybe I'll play, like, another couple or not. I mean, I do yeah. have a bit of... Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, we can definitely do one or two on stream at least. Um, Actually, yeah, that would be a pretty good idea, I think. Yeah, and Salty Monkey, for you, I mean... I, I don't think you were necessarily playing that much during the old Next Ramos GVG days, you know, where a lot of the, the powerful wild cards are. So yeah. uh, are you going to play much of the Brawl? I mean, obviously you play you can play the pre-made one, but the, the actual like arena, the constructed type one is going to be a bit more tricky. Yeah, um, I think I will just sort of to try it out, maybe get a pack and leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <fair enough. laughs> but um, I'll try it out. Like, uh, reputationally, I'm a very, very awful arena player in general, so but I mean, probably try for free and then just go yeah. back. <laughs> I mean, the trick with arena is that it's all about uh, building the deck 
uh, you know, with yeah. the, the kind of cards you get presented to you. Where's this? I mean, you can build out of your whole collection, right? Everything. So Everything. that yeah. side of arena, I don't think really is an issue. This is much more of a, a standard or a more of a constructed, you know, type problem yeah. rather than an, an arena problem. But I think not having yeah. access to some of those other cards can be a problem. And especially Might for a lot a of... Problem. Yeah, for a lot of other players that really just focus on standard and kind of dust their wild cards as they go into wild, you know, this is going to yeah. kind of be like one of those moments they're going to be like, ah, oh, dang. True. It does depend, though, on, like, which cards specifically I am allowed to take in because I love Flame Waker, for instance. Like, I mean, it's a Flame yeah. Waker. I'm a, I'm, I love Flame Waker. So I will make an entire deck full of Flame Wakers if I could, but well, I can't. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you can at least play some kind of tempo mage with Flame Waker. That's, that's yeah. definitely going to be a possibility. Yeah, uh, Flame Waker and LNS, That could be kind of scary. And before we bring <laughs> back some uh, some like Reno decks. Uh, Yo. Oh boy. At least uh, Raza Priest is nerfed. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, Reno, Reno Raza. Otherwise, otherwise that otherwise that's like what a lot of people that are just playing standard would have done is just played that deck because they're familiar with it with the. Uh, you know, extra power of the like Reno and cards like that. So, good, well, good timing. Just take a second and pause. Reno, Raza. Yeah, it, w it was. It was. It was a problem in Wild. Yeah, we can. And I mean, that's part of the. I mean, Wild is a format that exists, and it was a problem yeah, 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 in yeah. Wild uh, to a certain extent. And like Wild um, was one of the reasons they they nerfed Raza, even though it's going, Raza. it's getting rotated soon. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe it was also with this uh, upcoming Wild Fest in mind <laughs> that they nerfed it as well. But that seems really strange that they would nerf an entire like section just no, because no. they're like, oh, we've got a, <laughs> we've got this thing coming up. <laughs> no, but I mean like but the, I, I the timing saying. as well, rather than letting it, you know, letting it rotate and then seeing how it goes in Wild. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so I mean, overall, I think it, it's cool that they're bringing these, you know, uh, kind of. Things to fill our time in between expansions as we wait for the next unique expansion events. announcement. Yeah, unique events. I mean, we saw some of them before, uh, and I think Wildfest is, is pretty cool. Uh, it's nice that they're kind of making their own events as well, and not just you know tying it in with uh, yeah like real world stuff that happens like most games do these days. You know, like they have their Chinese New Year or their Valentine's or their uh, Olympics thing or whatever, like whatever Overwatch do all the time these days. Yeah. And Dota have been doing it for ages, and so I mean, it's cool that they have their own, you know, things. Hearthstone oh, very Olympic much in its own world. Hearthstone cards. No, you don't. It would all. It could only ever be a tavern brawl or like a card back, like. Well, well, they the could. Or they could change the game board, right? Yeah. Okay. The Damn. game board. Yeah. Anyway, but... you need to take a second. No, no. Yeah. I need to. I need to tell him this because he's being ridiculous. <laughs> Hearthstone and Olympics don't go in the same sentence. Just consider the time. It except, doesn't work. Except when Hearthstone is at the Olympics. The Olympics. Because that's it's different. because it's a non-violent esport and that's allowed at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm 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 joking, but I'm also not joking that much. Like, I mean, like if someone was to put Hearthstone and Olympics out of I'm all the big esports, it's the only one that would be viable in the, in the Olympics. Because like yeah, you know, with the Olympics of Sadness, they don't want violence, and that rules out every MOBA and every FPS because they are inherently about killing the opponents. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 Hearthstone Hearth Hearth is, but in like a way that you can easily sell off as non-violent. You can't sell off shooting well, them in the face with an AWP as non-violent. Well, the whole idea of Counter Strike is just out of the question because you are promoting terrorists versus counter terrorists. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry, CS, your whole game base is sort of. Not so you can rename not, it not to be like, you know, Team Blue and Team Red. Right? Team <laughs> Blue needs to plant a flower on bomb site A. And then <laughs> I mean, you, you mean Red flower bed needs A. To uproot it. You mean flower <laughs> bed A. Flower <laughs> bed A. Come on. If okay, you okay. guys use that, you are giving me money. So. <laughs> okay, 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 moving on. Yeah, let's move on. Now, uh, one of the decks you mentioned that you enjoy uh, is Secret Mage, Salt Monkey. And uh, yeah. that's one of the decks that I know you have been playing quite a bit uh, post the. Uh, nerf that happened recently in uh, 10.2. So, do you want to talk us through a little bit about uh, Secret Mage and yeah, why you think it's I, a good deck right now? Definitely. So, firstly, I want to say like thanks to everyone that's been sending deck lists. They have all been noted, and I'm planning on doing something for you guys and playing with it. I'm going to be keeping true to my promise of 15 packs, so don't stress. Um, 
However, if you know me, you'll know I'm a, an absolute mage fanatic. So I've taken to playing the secret mage really, really, really well. And I've almost been uh, playing it exclusively. And I'm trying to say that in a soft voice because it makes me sound very one- one-sided. However, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Deb here hates the deck. I absolutely love it because it's maybe a very familiar territory for me. Um, the matchups have been going really well and I like the little bit of RNG that it does have and I like the answers that it has with everything, especially considering the moment you put Alaneth up, you still have the burn to face. Um, it's it's come with a couple of changes in terms of not having corridor creeper anymore. I personally in my play, in my deck um, play a I nearly said spellbreaker again. Spellbender. <laughs> um, yeah, I play spellbender, which is a little bit surprising. It helps with the meta. Um, really would if like it got me to rank five and it got another friend of my, a friend of mine to rank three. Um, it's not a very difficult deck to learn. However, I have to add together with that, your skill cap in terms of playing this deck is not necessarily very high. Like, I don't look at someone that's playing this deck, like looking at me, and I'm saying this because I'm playing it. Um, you're not looking at it and going, wow, this person is playing such intricate Hearthstone. Like, it's such intense decision making. The deck sort of plays itself for you. So, if you're looking for easy games, I'm not saying easy like easy win, I'm talking about easy decision making. I'm chilling at the end of the night. Yeah. Deck, uh, Secret I think, Mage is for you. I think the one thing with Secret Mage uh, is really, well, and really what it's about is knowing when to pull the trigger. Knowing when to yeah. turn from your Pretty game bad. plan of uh, tempoing on the board. Uh, some people kind of call it Tempo Mage, but really it's, it's about knowing when to turn from that game plan to killing your opponent uh, exactly. and starting to spend your burn to go face. I mean, often the hardest decision in the deck is do, does this fireball kill a minion <laughs> or does this fireball kill face? Uh, and yeah. the decision there is really all about figuring out how much damage you can get out of the fireball killing the minion and mm. protecting your minion versus, you know, the fireball going face. And I mean, okay, in, in okay. that way, it plays very much like your classic uh, aggressive decks. If we think back to like Face Hunter, you know, those kind of decks where it was all about managing your burn. Uh, and managing your minions to get the most damage out of the deck as possible. Uh, this one comes with the high upside of drawing Eluneth and then never having yeah. to worry about running out of resources. Exactly. Um, but but uh, that's what I mean in terms of yeah. the deck plays itself. The moment you have Eluneth up, it's no longer a decision that you're making in terms of like, am I, you know, burning face? Am I, like, what am I doing? You have Eluneth up, the deck sort of makes the decision for you. So... Yeah, mm-hmm. once you have Alaneth up, you really do kind of have to go face a lot more, uh, especially yeah. because what happens then is uh, if you spend all your burn That's on hard. minions, you actually just fatigue yourself. Like, uh, one of the best ways to really play against the Secret Mage is if you can just heal through when they're Alanething and it, putting enough uh, board presence at the same time that you're forcing them to trade into the board and not actually get damage from their minions. If you can deny yeah. Secret Mage when you're playing against it any damage from minions, then you can really help their game plan because it's very difficult for them to burn you purely with spells. Yeah. Definitely. So, I mean, that's definitely one of the weaknesses of Secret Mage, and that's why uh, one of the, the decks that I think is, is quite good against it in general is just aggro decks. And Murloc Paladin, uh, Aggro, Druid, yeah. a lot of those are quite good. E- even C- um, Jade Druid can be quite good because of how much armor it has. It's, it's yeah. difficult to burn through. It's hard to burn through. Yeah, yeah. definitely. In, in terms of matchups, it's actually not got a very good matchup rate. Um, if you're going to be playing something like the new Zoo Warlock um, against it, it's really hard to play mage against the Zoo Warlock. It's really hard to play against uh, the, is it the Secret Hunter spell, spell Hunter at the moment. Uh, Murloc Paladin will make you want to kill yourself, pretty much. <laughs> Pick yourself in the face, get it over with. Um, so by no means is it like, oh, easy, easy matchup, like good win rates. Um, but it's still a really fun deck to play in terms of like not very hard decisions that you're making. Yeah, it can do well against stuff like uh, cube lock or uh, yeah, control well. warlock because it has the burn to go past the void lords, for instance. Uh, it can also do quite well against um, rogue. Kingsbane rogue or uh, yeah. you know traditionally it didn't do that well against tempo rogue, but tempo rogue has really fallen out a bit. It does quite well against miracle rogue um, and yeah. Kingsbane rogue because. The Kingsman Rogue really needs to get a really thick uh, li- lifesteal dagger up really early in order to mitigate the amount of burn that this deck has. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty so, much. I mean, uh, those are definitely some of the matchups. Any advice you would give anyone 
uh, that's going to be playing it's this play deck. mage. I don't understand why we're playing anything else. It's play mage. <laughs> she's I, I pretty in it. Jaina. She's blue. <laughs> she's yeah. gorgeous. I, I made um, sure to use Jaina <laughs> for this one instead of Cadgar because I knew that no, would have uh, Just be very careful in terms of uh, what you're getting for when um, when you've got the coin or not the coin because always remember uh, you're more often than not, and I know statistically speaking, your odds of drawing is either one of the secrets pretty much the same. But you will find that more often than not, you'll you'll be sitting with a counter spell in your hand. And if you've got a counter spell um, and you're mulliganing and you're mulliganing against a coin, just remember that that coin is probably going to be used to test against your counter spell. Yeah. And that might, if you've forgotten about it, it might definitely influence your entire game plan to the point where you can't recover. So mulligan yeah. is actually really important, important on this. Maybe check your mulligan uh, guide on uh, you know deck tracker if you do use such think about it really really carefully yeah i think that's a good point you raise uh counter spell you know it's often good to keep a secret especially if you have something like karen torment yeah. or uh cabal lackey uh this yeah. particular deck I, I have listed here doesn't actually have lackeys in but most of them tend to um if you have something like that to cheat out the secret then uh it, it's important to note whether you are actually going to play uh, whether you're on the coin or, or not on the coin. If you're not on the coin, then Counterspell is a pretty bad secret, as you mentioned, because it's really yeah. cheap for your opponent to get rid of that secret, which denies you Medivh's valet value, uh, amongst other things. Yeah. So I think that is a, an important thing to note. Uh, so yeah, that's a good piece of advice. Uh, next, moving on to a deck that absolutely crushes Secret Mage, and the only time I have lost with this deck to Secret Mage was when they uh, got a Primordial Glyph into Blizzard against me, uh, and that is Dudedin. Uh, so this is Muzzy's Dudedin list. No, Dudedin is correct, not the what you would like to call it. Uh, this is <laughs> Muzzy's Dudedin list. Uh, basically, the concept of this deck is getting lots of dudes on the board and uh, riding your dudes to victory, uh, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and by dudes, we mean uh, Silverhand Recruits. Uh, so what this deck has is it has Stand Against Darkness, it has Lost in the Jungle uh, for... Uh, to get lots of Sylvan recruits other than just your hero power. It also has Drygalt's Jailer, and when you're lucky, it has ident Unidentified Maul that gives you the two Silverhand recruits. So to make all those Silverhand recruits really work out well for you, uh, we have Level Up, which is... Uh, if you don't have Level Up, it is an epic. I would not suggest crafting it, but you can maybe play something like Fungomancer in the place of that. Um, it also has Crystal Lion, which gets cheaper for all the dudes you have on board. Uh, I had one particularly crazy game where my <laughs> opening hand on the coin was uh, two Lost in the Jungles and two Crystal Lions. So we proceeded to play lo Lost in the Jungle coin, Lost in the Jungle. So that's four dudes on turn one. Uh, and then turn two played a two mana 5-5 five, five Divine Shield Crystal Lion. That's, that's a good start. Uh, and then after that we got to play another Crystal Lion and Hero Power on turn three. So... It was, it was pretty silly, and then even followed up with a Rallying Blade to rub it in. Um, rallying Blade, <laughs> another card that actually synergizes quite well with the dudes, weirdly enough, because of Steward of Darkshire. So that gives your dudes uh, Divine Shield if they come out after the Darkshire comes out. Uh, and then the Rallying Blade can come down for a big buff as well, which can be uh, really useful. And of course, there's also Sunkeeper Tarium, which is popular in pretty much every... Um, Every Paladin deck. I was going to say every Aggro Paladin yeah. deck, but even Control every Paladins paladin. play <laughs> Sun Kibitarium. That That's a card that's definitely worth crafting if that's the only card you're yeah. missing for a deck like this or Murloc Paladin. Uh, Sun Kibitarium, definitely one worth crafting. So overall, I've really been enjoying this deck. One of the other interesting things is the Dirty Rats in it. So that's largely for the big uh, Call to Arms blowouts uh, where you get the you know free 2 mana uh, or the free 2-6 with Taunt of your Call to Arms, which can often protect a Knife Juggler. And that can be really powerful. But sometimes actually playing Dirty Rat's not that horrible. Just don't do it against Big Priest like I did in the <laughs> game. <laughs> and pulled out the Ashage to make their life easier. Uh, that, that, that didn't end well. But most of the time, Dirty Rat kind of works out. If you don't have Dirty Rat's for some reason, you can also play like Direwolf Alphas in, in their place. Um, overall, this deck does really well against other aggro decks. Because of how wide it can go, it's actually often pretty good against uh, Murloc Paladin, for instance. Uh, what it does struggle, though, because of how small all the dudes are, um, is any kind of whirlwindy type effects. So Defile, it's pretty rough against it. Even Hellfire, because even if you level up your dudes, they still die to Hellfire. Um, 
And then it also really struggles uh, against Despicable Dreadlord. Uh, if your Zoo opponent is playing Despicable Dreadlord, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, and Dustbreaker. And, and Dustbreaker. Dustbreaker can be pretty tricky, but that's true for almost every Paladin deck. Uh, yeah. And the one thing this deck does have is so many ways to refill the board that if you manage your resources correctly, you know, get the best value out of your hero powers, you can sometimes play it slower against those kind of Dustbreaker decks and basically wear out all their Dustbreakers, you know. You also have, you know, have the Call to Arms and the Divine Favors, so you can make those cards work to your favor to really, uh, ha, huh, favor, uh, to get... Work to your Divine Favor. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's, that's the, the joke I was kind of making. Anyway, um, you, you can make those cards work to give you enough of a, a comeback mechanic if you do lo lose, you know, your first board or your second board. What you always want to know is, like, how much do I commit to the board now that I'm still applying enough pressure and that I have a refill, hopefully. And then often you can just push for lethal of, you know, the light fuse Stegadon, which is essentially the uh, weaker... Um, Gentle Megasaur of this deck, or something like Saki Batarium, or Level Up. Also, Vine Cleaver is uh, also some great value, which uh, also does well to make dudes. So overall, I mean, I've been playing this quite a lot on stream. I have like a <laughs> 60 odd percent win rate in 50 odd games now. Uh, Muzzy took this to Legend on Asia, I think it was, from like five to Legend. And the deck is picking up a lot of popularity right now. The win rates are looking very good. There's quite a lot of different versions. Uh, this is just the version I've been playing, so the one I can personally recommend. But probably not the optimal version, to be honest. Uh, Panamonia, what have, what have your thoughts been? I mean, you've been co-oping with me on stream a lot whilst I've been playing it. <laughs> the thing about Dudin is it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I, I've, I've been playing it on, actually on my free to play in a account, obviously without some of the more expensive cards, and it's been doing quite well. But yeah, you know, like the, when you do get blown out, it, it does f usually feel bad when all your dudes die. You know, it, it obviously f it feels bad because the catch up mechanics, I mean, even though you say that there is a number of opportunities to refill, it's still, uh, I think, a kind of deck where if, if your opponent plays it right, they can, you know, they can wear you out. And, you know, as an aggr like as, as a sort of a more aggressive token based deck, it always feels bad to get like, you know, feel like you're running against your head into a wall. I remember the one game where you played against that big priest who played like four mm. Shadowwood Horrors. Yeah, that was particularly <laughs> painful. I still tried to grind it out. It didn't didn't work in the end. Uh, yeah, but... Four Shadowwood Horrors, a Psychic Scream, and a Jagged Fire Potion. Yeah, I think I had more dudes in my deck at the end of the game than anything else. That's when I eventually <laughs> gave up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it can definitely be quite punishing. And I think people are learning to play against it better now as it's kind of risen in popularity. But it's definitely been one of the more interesting variants of Paladin that's come out after the, the nerf. The other one that I'll give a quick shout out to is the like OTK Beardo Paladin, uh, Ultramax the Beardo Paladin, which I'm definitely so planning Paladin. on playing uh, using the um, Uther Lightbringer, I think is what, what, what's the full name? Uther of the Ebon Blade, that one. Uh, yeah, Uther yeah, the yeah. Ebon Blade uh, and his hero power to summon the Four Horsemen for victory. Uh, definitely something I will play a little bit on stream at some point later. But for now, I want to take Dudit into Legend and see what uh, the win rate can be in the end. So, uh, on to the deck that you have for us, Pandemonia. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about this uh, combo priest? So, this combo priest, actually, uh, when I first, like, started playing, I actually laughed because... I remember when I started playing Hearthstone, like in 2014, because this this something very similar to this kind of deck was actually a deck at the time, mm. because you know Inner Fire, Divine Spirit, Inner Fire, and Powered Shield are all cards from class uh, are from classic. Actually, the basic sets, if I'm correct, uh, or Inner Fire's uh, Inner Fire from yeah. classic, but Divine uh, classic. Spirit yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Sure. well, between classic and basic, so they've been there for a long time, mm. and so after after the nerf, uh, Spiteful Priest lost quite a lot of you know like Corridor Creepers, uh, Burn Mares, and then I was saw some of these combo uh, priestess with Divine Spirit in the fires, and I've been playing it. I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, my particular variation is a little bit. Uh, there was a some pro player who was playing a version with Nat Pagel, but it, yeah, it's I think, not I think very I popular. Think the this list, right? Yeah. The one with Nat Pagel. One I, basically, I told you it was playing Nat Pagel, and I knew you would like that, and you did, and then you now playing this list exclusively because Nat Pagel. Yeah, exclusively. Because Nat Pagel. So, okay, so 
just a, if anyone doesn't have Matt Pagel, the deck is still very good without Matt Pagel. Yes. Not, uh, not, not a necessary just, card. <laughs> not a necessary card. It has been super fun though. Uh, like I love when like my favorite part actually of it is when I can attack with Matt Pagel because he goes howdy. <laughs> <laughs> which is probably the attack sound of the game. But okay, but never mind, you know, killing people with like 28, 28, uh, you know, Nat, pa- like Nat Pagels or Twilight Tracks is quite amusing. Uh, so the deck also has, <coughs> besides the combo, it's got sort of some other sneaky combos which allow you for like really cool lethals. So it's got the um, Twilight Acolyte, which combos really well with uh, the Potion of Madness. To allow you to get through big taunts, but also to use their big taunts against them. So you know you cough, can like the bit Lord. Cough. exactly. Cough. You still avoid Lord, and you know you take away their taunts and you bash them for large amounts of damage. Yeah. Um, you can divine spirits, in a fire their own void lords, and hit them for eighteen. <laughs> Just don't do that unless it's lethal. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the other sort of uh, things that actually you suggested, and some people do take. Is because more decks are, are now playing as uh, uh, what's uh, the guys. Geist? What's the yeah. uh, Skulking Geist? Uh, you know, uh, a sort of a tech which is pretty good is uh, Crazed Alchemist, which basically does the inner fire kind of shenanigans. Um, so it allows you to buff a health and then swap it. But obviously, also it's only a good idea to use it for lethal because the health pool will generally be quite low after you swap because it doesn't change like in a fire. It 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 swaps it. Yeah, and just don't Which, uh, do it on your Nat Pagel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pro tip. But overall, the deck is a lot of fun. It's actually with without the Nat Pagel, and I mean, even your is not 100% necessary. The deck is actually very cheap to craft. Yeah. Uh, it's Shadow Vision is probably Shadow the most Visions, important uh, epic, right? And, and Nether uh, yeah, Spider Storian Sh- is Karasan? Yeah. But... Yeah, so if, I mean, the thing is. It's a kind of deck that if you like don't have a love like if you don't have Kurzan, you know you might kind of think twice because Cabal Talon, oh no, Cabal Talon Priest is from, not from Kurzan. No, I thought no. it was from Kurzan. That's from Mean Streets. Uh, I so. Because some of these cards are rotating out, but uh, the thing yeah, is the deck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. basically, I think if you're missing some of those cards, the, the key things to replace them with is card draw, right? I mean, that's why we even yeah. see, like, a novice engineer in this deck. Uh, it helps you get to your combo uh, faster. And, I mean, that's why the cards like Nat Paggle is actually good. Like, it's not just because Nat Paggle is also a 2-mana 0-4, and 4 is a good place to be starting with for the combo because, uh, you know, then you go... If you buff, it's, it's easier to get over the 32 mark, uh, yeah. or it can be pretty easy to get over, over the 30 mark, I mean. For like a proper OTK. Uh, it also is just important because occasionally it at least draws you some cards, and that's very important for this deck because one of the things <laughs> you can really yeah. suffer from is running out of cards otherwise. Just the interesting note uh, is like, even though we could be taught, we call it like a combo deck, like a lot of the times like in a lot of the matchups, you'll actually use you know your inner fire effects a lot earlier for just board control and just to clear minions and just you know just to maintain some semblance of board control. Uh, and then obviously, like Dustbreaker is massive in, in, in this deck in, in terms of staving off aggro. Yeah. But yeah, you, you, don't, you don't always have to save the combo pieces just for the combo. Like sometimes it's, it's actually correct to play them against just early on just to keep board control. Yeah, in certain matchups where you don't need the combo to win, uh, that can be good. Exactly. I mean, and th- that's often going to be like against aggro and stuff as well, because that yeah. aggro can otherwise be a bit of a tricky matchup for this combo priest. Uh, something like yeah. the Secret Mage can definitely burn it down fast enough. And uh, Ice Block is a good way to stop the 32-32 from killing you. <laughs> uh, yes, <sir. laughs> or a turn. Yeah, and I, and I mean, the counter spells and stuff are just pretty good to stop the Divine yeah. Favor, um, you know, those kind of cards as well. And I mean, the yeah. Silence is oh, also a, a super useful card in the Combo Priest to get through Taunts if you don't have the Potion of Madness steal with the Twilight Acolyte. Uh, and also sometimes just to activate a counter spell. Yep. Uh, uh, like silence, I've been really impressed with. I also like. I mean, this is obviously not an optimal list yet. There's still some cards I'm still debating, but like at the moment, I should probably jet drop Nat Pagel. But I'm um, too much. I, 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 I like. He's my boy. I like him a bit too much, <laughs> so I'm not dropping him yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I opened a golden net pagel and I, I've been waiting for this moment to use him. <laughs> exactly. And now, 
beating yeah. people with a gold and that pay go. I, I feel yeah. like I should almost put it on my CV. I, <laughs> I unfortunately I screenshot it from my Hearthstone where there is not a golden net faggot. So. Uh, <laughs> rude. But I have a golden double divine, a double golden divine spirit kappa. <laughs> <laughs> I want this it, that is that is a basic you. card, so you, you get it for just getting to the max level with priest. Uh, that, that that's why the kappas. Uh, yeah. So I mean. Uh, any advice you would have for people playing combo priest? Uh, you know, like besides the usual, you know, try get good curve. <laughs> I mean, you know, turn two Nether Spider Storian is pretty good. A lot of the times, I will actually, you know, you'll keep like something like uh, Twilight Drake in your opening hand to make sure you have a, a relatively a, a mid game uh, act uh, dragon activator. In some slower matchups, I've e uh, and I mean this has always been a contentious issue in Dragon decks. I uh, I will even actually keep your Sarah. So like, oh. like I'm, I'm uh, it's a, a hard debatable, but, but like like in slower uh, like uh, like against in priest mirrors, I like keeping your Sarah hmm. for the guaranteed as well as you know having the nine drop. The your Sarah is quite powerful against priests. So I mean yeah. that's one of those sort of debatable issues, but. And, and yeah. the other cards I think are pretty much auto keeps are Radiant Elemental, Northshire Cleric, Power Word Shield. I think those are pretty much all, all auto keeps. Paggle too in this version is an auto keep, uh, much yeah. more powerful on two than later in the game. And I think one of the well, other things that sometimes as well, yeah, that as a solid. Yeah, so I I was watching a few other streamers playing decks like this, and basically the argument was that Cabal Talon Priest is 100% keep as well, but it's just far better to keep Cabal Talon Priest. I was watching Cassie earlier today, uh, he was saying like that's the advice he got from a lot from a lot of other pros. So I think Cabal Talon Priest is actually also a, a, like a guaranteed keep. I think you always keep it, like even if you don't have any of the yeah. other cards in hand. I think because for a while I was only keeping it if I had the coin. Yeah. Like. Uh... Uh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I, so the stick, I went on a, uh, I mean, just for anyone interested out there, I went on a 14 game win streak with it from like rank uh, nine to rank five. So, deck's not bad. Uh, obviously, small sample size, but uh, uh, I mean, 14, 14 oh, seems pretty good though. Yeah. Well done. You high rolled your divine spirit in the fires very well. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Beating people with 28, 28 net pay goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and you haven't been the only one beating people with the uh, combo priest recently. Uh, over the last weekend, we've also had the Hearthstone Championship Tour events have started kicking off. Uh, started with HCT Germany. Uh, we saw a few players there also playing the combo priest deck. Uh, overall, it was Be Quiet that uh, managed to uh, take home the title, uh, beating Hunter Ace in the final. Um, if I'm not, uh, if we take a look at the like deck distribution, we'll see the Dragon Priest is actually, you know, 14 of the decks are Dragon Priest, uh, and that's kind of split a little bit between the the spiteful and the combo. But I think the majority were combo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Glazer was the one playing like a control Dragon Priest, which was interesting. Uh, but a lot of the other ones we see were the the combo priests, and I mean, um, Glazer, for instance, in his lineup actually had four decks with um, Skulking Geist. So that yeah, was something really... that, you know, he, he actually identified that Combo Priest would be quite a, a popular thing and uh, really managed to hit that well. And I mean, I think it was in the quarterfinals he played Orange, who had both Jade Druid and Combo Priest and Q-Block in his list. Three decks that all <laughs> kind of suffer from uh, losing their one mana spells. Um, and I mean, Hunter <laughs> is, he had Combo Priest in the final, um, but it didn't work out for him. And they, and it was be quiet the only person bringing the actual uh big priest that managed to win uh with his lineup that was the Enzol con in Zoth control mage which we'll see Zoth. a little bit just now yeah uh murloc paladin which i mean we've said is really strong big priest uh another deck that we identified as you know a winner post the nerf and uh unsurprisingly cube lock in that fourth slot as most people brought some form of warlock uh, generally cube lock or control although some people like bosden did actually bring uh, Zoo or discard luck, Bosden and uh, Riku were the two that brought that. So, uh, congrats to be quiet. It's going to be one of the early points leaders, combined with obviously the people that did well on uh, the Legend Ladder for uh, the January season. So, I know that you watched uh, uh, quite a bit of this as well, uh, or quite a bit of the event as well, Panamonia. What were your thoughts on the event as a whole? 
You know, yeah, I watched a, a bit here and there. <coughs> I, I always like watching, like the Take TV ones are usually particularly fun to watch because there's always an emphasis on that being a little bit more lighthearted and fun. You know, you watch the, the, the guys casting like on the couch and joking with each other. So yeah. it just always looks like a fun time, you know, not as serious. I mean, even though this is very serious in terms of it being a, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. HTT uh, championship, it still looks like the guys are having fun. And for me, that's also obviously quite a, a big thing. You know, it's like a chilled, fun environment. The guys are joking and laughing and playing good Hearthstone. Yeah, and I mean, I think for this one in particular, it was a little bit different to some of the previous Take TV events because this one was a more serious one, really, than like the yeah. uh, Seed Story the Cup. Seed Story. You know, usually in Seed Story Cup, one of the cool things is seeing other pro players cast with the, the casters. So this time it was just a little bit more relaxed, but, you know, from only the, the three official casters for the event, which were uh, Raven, Soddle, and Lothar. So, I mean, it was an interesting kind of in-between the casual and more serious uh, vibe from the, the casting. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, you know, some good results for these players. Uh, Hunter S is actually definitely like an up-and-coming player, uh, quite a young player still, I think, 16 or 17 i don't know exactly but uh quite a young player from norway if i'm not mistaken yeah um, I think so. oh no wait i think it's from denmark anyway uh doesn't really matter the the, fa the flags are really really unclear on uh, uh half point here but anyway uh moving on to the next hct event that is going to be happening this weekend and that's going to be hearthstone uh or the copa america hct event um We've got 16 players taking part in this as well in four different groups. I'm going to have a quick look at their deck lists, which are just announced or released today. Um, so first off, Lots we've of got... Lots of uh, Yeah, first off, we've got Anguistar here with, uh, from Chile with uh, Murloc Paladin, the Combo Priest, uh, very similar to yours, but no Nat Paggle. Uh, the Enzoth Control uh -huh. Mage, which we saw Be Quiet, uh, had a very similar deck to this as well with the Enzoth and Syndragosa and Curator that, that uh, won him that event. Uh, and then a Control Warlock. So we're just going to go through all these decks quickly and then maybe talk about the, the overall themes. Uh, and then from Eridor here, from Mexico, we see a Q-Block, a Spiteful Priest, another Enzoth Control Mage, and a, another Murloc Paladin. Uh, this one with Spellbreaker, Valinia, and Leroy, though, is his uh, choices. Uh, we have Declue from South Korea, with uh, a secret mage uh, over here. He has the Spiteful Priest, um, the Spiteful Druid, which is uh, one of the first times we're seeing this deck in, in tournaments, and uh, a Control Warlock. Uh, so once again, more, more a lot of these controls and cube blocks so far in pretty much all the lineups, including Phenoms, which is a pretty uh, unique lineup here. He has Quest Mage, <laughs> Quest Rogue, uh, Quest Druid, and Cube Block. So, I mean, the plan here with Phenom's lineup is he's definitely targeting all these control lineups. And, I mean, if we look back over the lineups we were seeing, there was at least two or three control decks in almost all those lineups. So, uh, that's actually looking good for, for Phenom. Uh, then we have Garifer from Brazil. Uh, he has uh, Evolve Shaman, uh, which is another deck that's been making a bit of a return recently. The one deck that still uh, manages to use Corridor Creeper quite effectively. Uh, he has Secret Mage, uh, Secret Hunter, or I suppose, I mean, this is just uh, Spell Hunter. Spell sorry. Hunter. Yeah, Spell Hunter, yeah. not Secret Hunter. Um, with the Bonds, Yashaj, um, kind of... Shenanigans. Yeah, shenanigans, even though Yashaj <laughs> never pulls anything. Uh, well, I mean, you get... If Bonds into Yashaj gives you, uh, what, 14, 15 of stats on turn 4, which is... Or Only whenever 14, you play the Bonds, stats. which is pr yeah. pretty good. Uh, and then he yeah. also has Control Warlock. <laughs> Uh, we've seen uh, basically all the players mostly deciding between Control Warlock and Q-Block. Then we have Gladen from Argentina. Uh, we've got another Spiteful Priest, Control Warlock, Control Paladin, which is another control deck that's actually been seeing quite a lot more played recently. Uh, and then another Control Mage, this time going with the Dragon Caller Alana vibe. Uh, we've got another Mexican player, I am Chaps GG, uh, with another... Uh, this is Control Priest from him. Basically, I mean, you see Doomsayers oh, wow. and stuff in this list as well. And Lease. Yeah, and Lease. <laughs> um, with obviously the Shadow Visions into the repeated Nguro pack synergy. Uh, he has Cube Lock, Control Paladin, and Control Mage. So we can see there's definitely been a theme of Control. And the person that probably epitomizes that Control theme the most is Kuanet. Uh, with Control <laughs> Warrior, um, control Paladin, control Warlock, and Control Mage. 
every single one of his decks, like, except the Warrior, has Zothin as well. Uh, <laughs> the Warrior deck has a single Dead Man's Hand to give him some extra game and, and kind of fatigue matchups. So, uh, Kuonet, with probably the most control lineup we've seen in quite a long time, uh, even has Dragon Slayer and his Paladin to help counter the, the, the Dragon Priests out there, which has also been very popular. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Uh, I think the Zola the Gorgon in three of his decks as well. I just noticed oh, yeah, this as yeah. well. For extra value. I mean, the Zola <laughs> in uh, the Mage is definitely something I've seen uh, a fair bit recently. And I mean, if you Zola a, a Ken or a Ragnaros Lightlord or a Tyrion, you're going to be pretty happy with that. You can even uh, Zola the what, the Horsemen to maybe give yourself a better chance at sometimes finishing them off with Uther. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I, I, screen, I, I screen capped his list and sent it to Pandemonia earlier, telling him that I know who he's going to be supporting at uh, Copa America. Uh, I know he's supported Kuonet previously in the HCT events, and this time he's bringing yeah. Control <laughs> Warrior, which is definitely enough a to get Pandemonia support. Heart. Yeah. A man after my own heart. Uh, and then, moving on, we <laughs> have Neves, another Brazilian player, another Combo Priest, Murloc Paladin. Uh, control Warlock and Control Mage. So, I mean, I think Control Warlock and Control Mage have really been the two decks that seem to be dominating so far. We see Perna here with both of those decks again as well. He actually also has the OTK Paladin here with the uh, Auction Master Beardo, the Burgly Bullies. Uh, so he's gone with that build of the Control Paladin with uh, Adaptation as his choice as well, which is an interesting choice um, over what is sometimes played uh, is Hydrologist, but that's obviously a little bit worse with uh, Call to Arms. Uh, and then he also has Big Priest, which is another deck trying to target uh, control decks a little bit, I think. Uh, and then we have Pinche, uh, a Argentinian player, uh, with another Spiteful Priest, another Control Warlock, uh, another Control Mage, and another Murloc Paladin. Actually, uh, this Control this Mage a... has Lanessa, though. No, no, sorry. This isn't actually Murloc Paladin. This is another build of OTK Paladin. He has the Ultra Master yeah. Theodore and the Lanessa. And, and stuff. Lanessa, yeah. Yeah. So you were saying <laughs> his? Control Mage has? His Control Mage is uh, Dragon Caller Alana. Yeah, yeah. This is the Dragon Caller Alana version of the deck. But I mean, we're seeing yeah. the, the Control Mage being one of the most popular decks. Uh, Control Mage and Cube or Control Warlock is in pretty much all these lineups except. Phenoms, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Phenom does have the cube, the, the cube warlock. Uh, and then we see another uh, OTK paladin here for race, uh, combined with big priest, uh, control warlock, and uh, control mage. Uh, which and is he has in all his decks, oh, no, except the big priest, which has yeah, Yasraj. Yeah, he, ha he, has an old 10, 10, 10. he has an old guard in each one of his decks. Uh, and then yeah. we have Seo Hyun from Canada. He has control warrior, <laughs> control uh, warlock. Control Mage and uh, Control Paladin, <laughs> so very similar to Kuonet's lineup as well. Uh, what, then a, we, what a boy! Then we have Sid with his Control Mage, Cube Warlock, uh, another Dragon Priest. This time with an Eater of Secrets tech as well. Uh, something I've seen in, in a few of these decks, which should do quite well with the, mage. with the mages around. And uh, I think they're also targeting Tempo Mage or Secret Mage a little bit with that. Uh, and then he also has Murloc Paladin, uh, and then. Coming towards the end here, we have Valash, a Mexican player with Control Mage, Control Warlock, <laughs> Control uh, Paladin. Yeah, this is just the standard Control one, and Big Priest. So, I mean, we're definitely seeing the theme here. And honestly, looking at a lot of these lineups so far, uh, well, actually, this is the last one, Yenis, uh, with the um, Evolve, Evolve Shaman. Shaman. Yeah, I couldn't remember the, the, the word. Uh, a, a much faster uh, combo priest with the Lyra in, uh, and no, like your Sarah for the Lakeham curve, a control uh, warlock and a control mage. So, I mean, it's looking at the theme so far, it does seem that Phenom and his quest decks are pretty well positioned against this heavy, yeah, heavy, heavy control field. <laughs> Uh, he's just gonna hope to gonna avoid say. the the few people that don't have any control decks, but I think there's almost nobody that doesn't at least have control warlock, One. right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. at least yeah. the deck he should always be able to punish. So as long as the quest decks don't fall over themselves here, and Q-Lock <laughs> isn't the the failing point against some of the uh, control warlocks, which is a scenario I could see happen. Uh, Phenom should be pretty well positioned, I think. Uh, the one player that's really gone against the grain, although this is exactly what he did to qualify for this event, I must point out. Uh, yet everyone still chose to bring what is one of the heaviest control metas I've seen in a, in a tournament for a long time. So, I mean, 
this is going to be a very very heavy control meta uh, so if you enjoy watching control uh matchups you're gonna have to wake up at whatever time this is starting our local time um in fact we do actually have the time at the bottom here uh 5 p.m cet oh no sorry it's starting at 8 a.m p oh okay it does start at 5 p.m cet so that's actually not so bad uh, for our local time. It just means it's going to go get quite late into the night. Get a comfortable pillow. Six o'clock you know, on Wednesday. Uh, no, so it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and 6 p.m. on Sunday for just the semifinals and finals. Oh, so yeah. it, awesome. it should it should be pretty watchable for uh, us here in South Africa and European time. And the casters are going to be Lorinda and Darrock Brown. Um, and it's going to be on this Copa America channel, so make sure you follow that one rather than, you know, I was expecting it to be on, like, Play Hearthstone, uh, but it makes sense that they have kind of their own channel for that. Um, so I think that's definitely going to be interesting to watch a lot of, a lot of control games. The games are going to oh, last the, pretty, actually, long, uh, pretty long. I'm hyped. <laughs> I'm hyped for, uh, I'm hyped for, for an hour-long matches. And and Sio Hyun. You want to watch the Control exactly. Warrior Mirror? Oh. Oh. <laughs> 1050 boys. <laughs> I mean, they don't. They don't both have two dead man's hands. Both of them only have one dead man's hand. So we're not gonna get uh, well, the dead man's two, hand. Did they? No, no, no. I'm pretty sure Kurnet only has one. Uh, yeah, Kurnet has one. Uh, Sio Sio Hyun, Hyun, uh, he only has, has one, one as well. well. Yeah, no, uh, none, okay. none of them brought like a full kind of dead man's hand uh -huh. control warrior. It's just they have one for some extra value. So you know. It's going to be pretty important in that matchup who gets more value out of their uh, dead man's hands. <laughs> uh, if that ever happens, and I almost hope it doesn't, but I almost kind of hope it does. Um, but yeah, on that note, before we have this podcast go longer than a Control Warrior mirror, uh, we're going to end the podcast here. Uh, once again, always uh, we're always looking for any kind of feedback. Uh, a lot more people have been leaving comments on the uh, YouTube videos, and we really appreciate that. Uh, as well as you can find us on Twitter. Uh, at Salty Monkey, at Pandemonia, ZA, and at Dib underscore gaming. Um, it's, it's always below you. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, no, but like, I'll be a thumbs up. Like, you do that <laughs> sad. Um, so yeah, you can find us on uh, Twitter, and you can also leave us comments on the, the YouTube videos. Um, we do often respond there as well, and we really appreciate uh, the support from everyone. Uh, also really uh, appreciate shares wherever possible. I've been getting a, a lot more traction recently, and it, it's really great uh, just to see the numbers go up. It, ma it makes us feel better, and it makes us want to put a lot more effort into these videos, which is hopefully at least uh, showing. And uh, yeah, I mean, thanks a lot for joining me uh, again today, yeah. guys. Uh, and uh, good luck, everyone, uh, in what's looking like a control meta if everyone net decks this, these tournament lineups. <laughs> but uh, a ladder is a little bit of a different story, and uh, I think playing Murloc Paladin or Secret Mage, you can still get away with it there on, on ladder. Although, Secret Mage, you don't really want to see the, the, um, the aggro decks that are kind of popular on ladder. So. Anyway, uh, hopefully you can go ahead and try out those decks. Let us know how it goes. But thanks, everyone. Uh, that's everything we have for Magma Rages episode 49. Cheerio. Cheerio.